All right, hey guys, I'm Allie Trutman, founder and CEO of Wicked Sheets. And we're here today with Dr. Kevin Chapman, who specializes in anxiety um, treatment and post-traumatic stress disorders. And we really wanna to talk to him today in our first ever video blog um, for your benefits so that we can learn more about anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder as it relates to night terrors and night sweats. So um, I know Dr. Kevin Chapman because of my graduate school experience. He was a mentor and um, just, genius in uh, the University of Louisville and worked with one of my best friends and that's how we got to know each other. Yep. So we're very honored to be with Dr. Kevin Chapman today. We call him K-Chap. Um, but do you want to just share a little bit about your background and kind of how you got here? Yeah, yeah. so I'm honored to be here first and foremost and thanks for having me. Uh, so the way I got here is I did a bachelor's of psychology at Center College and then ultimately I just love the field of psychology. I knew I wanted to go into the helping profession. And then when I took my first psych class, I said, you know what, this is the kind of field I want to go into. It was challenging, it was innovative. And so I wanted to help people who had mental illness, particularly anxiety disorders. So I did my doctoral work at the University of Louisville in clinical psychology. Okay, now at Center, you were an athlete, right? I was. Okay, so sports is a big part of your background. Sports is a very big part of my background. I was a two sport athlete at Center. I okay. played football and ran track at Center. I was a sprinter, I was successful, it was fun, and it helped me really navigate my academic and athletic background as well when I was there. So I've always been an athlete, also do some sports performance stuff with athletes as well. So. Okay. And I know we're going to get into your treatments in a little bit here, but how, how important do you think exercise and the physical um, aspects of treatment, is that so important in any mental illness, not just anxiety? Well, yeah, I think that's essential because if you think about emotional experiences, there's three parts, there's thoughts, there's feelings and physiological arousal. And there's behavior. Many people that I see, of course, are afraid of the symptoms that they have. Now, the symptoms they have are normal symptoms, but they can be very uncomfortable. So if you think about something like exercise and being involved in athletics, mm -hmm. then you find that those sensations are pretty consistent. Right. right. They're the same. So it's important to experience those sensations and learn that they're harmless and actually good for you. Okay. Okay. Well, and a lot of our customers are coming to us because of medications and things like that, but also because of their exercise regimens and training programs. And so I'm, I'm glad to hear that the physiological component is so important. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So while we're talking about that, can you kind of tell me um, how your patients find you? What, you know, what are the symptoms that they're presenting with when they come to you? Mm -hmm. And does it, does it look like the label of anxiety? Does it look like that? Or is it more an inner mm -hmm. thought and feeling that they're experiencing that is expressing itself? That's a really good question. So I consider myself a specialist. So most of the work that I do is related to, <clears throat> excuse me, all things anxiety. So anything under the anxiety disorder umbrella. So most people who come to me, they come to me from a variety of different methods, right? So, but they tend to see me for anything considered anxiety, such as like PTSD, okay. although no longer an anxiety disorder, has an anxiety and a fear basis to it. So the treatment's consistent across anxiety disorders. So PTSD, OCD, panic disorder. So people who have panic attacks, uh, even nocturnal panic attacks that occur at night, which is another discussion. Uh, social anxiety, worry, those sorts of things, phobias, phobias of the doctor, the dentist, things like that. Okay, so all these things I read in my textbook when I was going through graduate <laughs> they school, they happen. They happen and, a lot. And of course, I went, I went a different route, and I chose to work in the autism spectrum mm -hmm. disorders. And so, I was always interested in the what we'd classify as abnormal right. um, psychology yeah. and disorders. I was always interested in that stuff. So yeah. to know that a friend of mine gets to do this every day. Every day. It's never and, a dull moment. <laughs> well, and I know you have so many success stories with your patients. Yeah. And, and it's not just a one in, one out. Right. It's right. you want to teach them or give them the skill set of a lifetime Absolutely. of tools for treatment. Yeah, Ellie, you say that. I uh, One of my mottos that I teach my clients is that I want to teach you to be your own psychologist. People spend kind of the equivalent of a semester with me. So I'm providing them with tools that will not only help them with their symptoms and the relief they're in, but also for the things in life, difficult relationships, employees, bosses, supervisors, family members, right? All of those are relevant to most people that I see. So they really are equipped to deal with all things life, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love that. I think that, and obviously why I went into the field is psychology is all around us. It's in business, yep. it's in exercise, right. it's in treatments. Absolutely. And, and I think it's just such a vital part of everything we do. And, and a lot of our customers, are, as I mentioned, um, you know, on 
antidepressants for yep. anxiety. It's true. But also, we have a lot of folks that are suffering from cancer treatments. Okay. Um, or cancer and then the treatments. I, mm -hmm. I say suffering mm -hmm. from that because chemo and radiation right. obviously takes a mental Very and true. physical toll. Um, we have folks with menopause, going through menopause, yep. which is highly emotional, Absolutely. highly physiological. And then we also have um, customers that are on medications for diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so psychology is in every single it one is. of those. It is. And that's why everyone says, how did you go from studying psych child psychology into night sweats? Right. I actually can provide a tangible treatment. This is very true. And a lot of times we don't get to do that. I agree so, with that. So yeah. that's why that's well, how excellent. I love that all this stuff ties in. Right, and that's it why does. I just want to be able to help people sleep better, just like you want to help people. Right be successful in their lives. Right, absolutely. So we've talked a little bit about anxiety. I kind of want to veer down the path of post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. since it's not, um, per the DSM, it's not totally related anymore. Right. Even though it has an anxiety component. Well, it certainly does, yeah. So what does, what does post-traumatic stress disorder look like? Yeah, so in terms of PTSD, really, the, the main criteria for PTSD is that you have to either experience or witness a traumatic or life-threatening event, right? So that could be assault, that could be a rape, that could be uh, seeing someone badly injured or killed, combat, natural or man-made disaster, something that would have left someone with like a horror or a helplessness reaction. Okay. And so typically the symptoms fall into three categories. One, there's the reliving of the traumatic event, either through nightmares, flashbacks, night terrors, intrusive recollections of some sort, so the memory of the event. Um, there's also avoidance behavior, so it's avoidance of things that remind you of the event, people, places, things that even resemble the event, conversations, those sorts of things. And then there's hyper arousal. So I'm super vigilant, uh, my physiological arousal is heightened, my startle response is heightened, I might sweat, I might have a fast beating heart, uh, I have huge sleep disturbance, like my sleep is really messed up typically. So that tends to fit most of the profiles that I would see for PTSD. It's pretty consistent across the board. All right, and um, we were talking briefly, typically women. Oh yeah. Two times as likely as yep. what, you know, the statistics That's I'm reading. That's just accurate, yeah, absolutely. And so I'm assuming a lot of that could be um, sex abuse yes. or sex, sexual trauma? Sexual Can trauma, physical that? assault, those are two of the leading causes for, for most women who experience PTSD. Yes, yeah, so that's accurate. All right, and I know we're right down the road from Fort Knox. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of the military that are coming back, are they suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, reliving those traumatic events that, in, that happened in combat? Yeah, absolutely, and you find the military population is one of the most at risk populations because of the nature of their experiences every day. So you find a lot of veterans that return who have PTSD, many of which are undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. Because the way, the way PTSD works is it can happen right away, but they have to have the symptoms for at least a month. And that can happen right away. It could take several months, it could take several weeks, it could take even years for people to start manifesting those symptoms. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so a traumatic event could be a one-time thing. It could be a one-time thing. And then, and the level of severity is different for everybody. Absolutely, it's definitely relative. But what you find with PTSD, it's one of those clean diagnoses in many ways, Allie, because you find there's some consistency across the symptoms because it's pretty easily identified. Okay, isn't that so, I just find that so interesting that yeah. a number of different causes mm -hmm. create the same behavioral and physiological patterns mm -hmm. in people. So as yep. a as a clinician, I'm yep. sure you're seeing the things presented right. and you're like, okay, but the cause could be so different. So let's work backwards and try and figure out what mm -hmm. happened. And, mm -hmm. and I know you have individualized treatments. Right. And you guys use um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy right. a lot. Yep. So can you, just for the lay person, tell us a little bit about cognitive behavioral therapy and, and what that entails? Yeah, yeah. So cognitive behavioral therapy, <clears throat> also known as CBT, mm -hmm is uh, essentially teaching people the relationship between the thoughts that they have and the role that your cognition or thoughts have on your feelings, your physiological arousal, and your behavior. And within PTSD, there's a form of CBT called prolonged exposure. Because what we find is sense avoidance is one of the hallmark features of PTSD and all anxiety disorders for that matter. Mm -hmm. Then we know that exposing in a graduated fashion, like confronting the traumatic memory, the traumatic event, 
in a graduated way. It's part of the way that you process what took place because people with PTSD are reliving the trauma, right? right? So we know in time and space that the event's not happening. If I were assaulted, for example, if I were assaulted, I might still feel as if it's happening right now in the room with you, Allie, mm -hmm. but in reality, it happened maybe six months ago. But nonetheless, I'm still having the exact same arousal associated with that event. So because of that, we have to, and it sounds you know, somewhat uncomfortable because it is, right. but ultimately it's beautiful when you're confronting those symptoms and then ultimately they take their life back. So it's really awesome to watch, honestly. That, that just gave me chills the way yeah. you're talking about it because some people think that they're, that anxiety and PTSD or mental disorder right. is hopeless. Right, absolutely. And you it's are not. giving them a reason to get their life back and, and giving them the tools to do that. Yep. It's people like you that help our friends and family, everybody knows someone with mental disorder. That's true. Um, give them hope again. And right. so thanks for, thanks for what you're doing. And thank you, I appreciate that. It's an honor. And in the case of PTSD, the viewers were talking 7.7 .7 million Americans. 7.7 .7 million, so that's a huge number. Right. And, and many of those people aren't seeking the right treatment. So it's a lot of folks that really need services. Right. And, and I'm sure out of fear, mm -hmm. out of um, fear of not being able to afford right. it, yep. afford treatment, I'm sure insurance, and that's a whole other ballgame, right. things it's true. like that. Yep. Um, and I know the military is focusing a lot on that and trying to get their, their veterans help, the help they need. But again, if that appears six months later, eight months later, right. They, they can't predict for that. It's true. So it's very true. It's, it's traumatic. Yep. Um, so talk to me a little bit. I'm going to ask the question. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Do any of your patients come to you and say, I have night sweats? Most of them do, actually. Really? Um, well, yeah, because if you think about PTSD is one of those conditions. Well, anxiety in general, right? So right. I, forgive me, but I'm going to lump PTSD in that because sure. the treatment is consistent, right? So if you think about any sort of anxiety or fear-based disorder, PTSD certainly shares with anxiety. Most of the clients that I see complain of either nocturnal panic attacks where they wake up. That uh, like choking right, feeling? Right, they have a choking feeling, you know, night terrors, that sort of thing. And then with PTSD, interestingly enough, you know, one of the criteria, of course, is kind of intrusive recollections or reliving the trauma. Well, reliving the trauma typically takes place at night, right? So if you're waking up from a nightmare, which is part of the criteria, you find that you have the huge physiological arousal, you have this adrenaline burst if it's a panic attack, right, because of the trauma. So you're sweating, you're having a fast beating heart, you're having shortness of breath, and you wake up drenched, you really do. Oh, well, I'm glad that I can help no, with that aspect of it. Clearly yeah. they'd be like, hey, King Chap, can you come and like put me to bed at night when I wake up? <laughs> right. And you're right there and just give me that tool. Right. You're hoping you are mentally there for them. Right. I'm hoping I'm physically there no, for them. very much so. Our joke is like, get get wicked good sleep on us. So right, like, right, right, right. You like know, that. we can give you the sheets, but yeah. literally, you're literally on us. Right, I love it. <laughs> um, so um, what I typically like to do is give our customers like a tip or a treatment plan, right. you know, ways that they can can help deal with night sweats, night terrors. And from the anxiety perspective, let's say someone is going through a nocturnal panic attack, they mm -hmm. wake up. What are what are some things you can tell them to do like right then and there immediately when they wake up to help starting to cope with that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Breathing so, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of my mottos with breathing is funny. I said, well, since you have to breathe anyway, you might as well do it correctly. Yeah, I like right, that. Right? Because like most people who panic, most people who have night sweats, most people who wake up with this surge of physiological arousal, over sixty-five percent of them are over breathing. So in other words, they're hyperventilating. Oh. So the single most important tool you can take with you anywhere mm -hmm. that's tangible is breathing so one tip I'd say is when I wake up if I have a panic attack or if I have some night sweats and I'm having this huge surge of adrenaline the first thing I would do is I would inhale through my nose for about four to five seconds okay. and then I'd exhale out my mouth for about six that stimulates heart lung synchronization alley basically it's a physiological reset button you press the button and then you have your, your breathing back under control so if you're able to do that that's going to be extremely helpful so the second thing is to understand where you are in time and space okay right so the symptoms of ptsd and panic and anxiety and fear and all of those disorders and symptoms is that you know you're going to have a fast beating heart shortness of breath maybe even tingling sensation hot flashes okay but the thing is, is our body's designed to do those things if we're actually in danger so those symptoms in and of themselves are harm harmful right they're harmless so that's the cognitive thought part that we talked about in cbt mm -hmm. is viewing those symptoms as okay i had a bad dream i had a nightmare i'm in time and space in my room 
I'm safe. My heart's beating fast. That's just anxiety. Talking about it in kind of a eh kind of way, although it feels uncomfortable, the way you talk to your body, it's a gentleman, right? It responds to the way you tell it. So if you talk to your body that way, it naturally is going to calm down. But the breathing is really the first step, though. Inhale for four, nose, exhale out the mouth for six, and then kind of ground yourself and then process what you're saying to yourself as it relates to time and space. So. I love that. Well, and I think a lot of times people mislabel that heartbeat, mislabel Precisely. those things, and, and then they freak themselves out even yes, further. Yes, it's a cycle. Right. So if it's you like, can break the cycle, yep. you can get back on track. Yep. I love that. Absolutely. I think that's great. So oh, wonderful. Well, I, I, you know, we want to keep these blogs yeah. short and informative. Mm-hmm. And I know we just jam packed a lot in here and I just cannot thank you enough for sharing oh, for your minutes. expertise with me and with, with our customers, our blogs get a lot of traffic. So I know yeah, that. It's fun. I and appreciate if, it. And if you're in the Louisville area, Louisville or Southern Indiana area, and he's taking new, new patients, new clients, <laughs> You know who to call. We'll put all that information on our website. But thank you so much. And thanks, Keychat. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Ellie. I appreciate it. Take care. Yeah, you too.